Welcome, welcome guys. For some of you, this is going to be the first video you see for Exodus. I have made plenty of videos that are on my YouTube channel. Um, I intend on doing write-ups and videos, so I'll probably try and do a write-up first next time, but this I've been waiting to do for quite a while. So basically, I'm just kind of going to go through it this time, but usually it'd have a little bit more more stuff to it you know i've been doing this on the facebook page for quite some time but anyways this is the dynamic duo grand prix day one 2017 i worked on the noise suppression so uh on my mic so i hope that that works it didn't sound nearly as staticky before um i do have the mic boost on so it can be a little bit louder and hopefully i can put a little bit of music in the background so it's not completely quiet but anyways, let's get on with the show. In our opening matchup, we have the Grand Heavy Metalweight Championship on the line. This is a pre-show bout. Now, I did not make this event very long. I will try to make tomorrow's event a little longer, though there will be a few less matches, I think. I'll still make it a little bit longer, just in case, just to leave a little bit more. Uh... Well, I guess there really won't be less matches. There'll probably be more. But so, yeah, I'll definitely have to up that. But we open up the show with our champion, Ragnar the Viking, over here. He is a two-time champion. Our, to fill those of you in who are new, the Grand Heavy Metalweight Championship is basically my hardcore championship. Um, or if you've heard of the Heavy Metalweight Championship, I believe it's DDT. I think it's kind of traveled a little bit over Japan. More than one place. I know the, uh, what was it, a uh, little... The Undertaker's daughter, or whatever gimmick was, she held it for a little while, and it's kind of been used as a comedy thing. But I'm going to use it more as a as a hardcore title. So, Ragnar the Viking, the only two-time champion in the in the belt's history, loses it in the pre-show to Demon Akamatsu, who is Kenji Akamatsu. If you had not figured that out, he is under a mask and Crimson Ghost. Really, I didn't need to put him in that matchup because I was really hoping that would put it on pay-per-view, but then I kind of forgot that I did not have time. So, the uh, Crimson Ghost is in there, and he actually puts on, I believe, the best performance of the match, considering he's probably the best worker, but he also is the least known. So, in a good little opener, 61, that's not bad. No big improvements, but... Uh, color commentary and the announcing lifted the match. So we got an almost packed house here. We're only missing about 163 people or 177 people. Wow, come on. But anyways, that's our pre-show. Let's get on with the action. We're going to have four of the quarterfinal matchups and then we're going to have a little break in between the action. Move on to the last four. To open up the show here tonight, and about the head great wrestling decent reaction the unbreakable stone yashikawa yoshikawa and ed stone defeated supernova extraordinario jr and kamikaze sorry i did not put the title away ah. so they defeated them in the opening matchup it's a 75 got the show off to a strong start that's what we look for kamikaze did not put on nearly as good a performance as the rest of them but that's okay Extraordinary Jr. and Kamikaze are actually down in my developmental territory. They are both doing very well there. I think Kamikaze has a tag team title under his belt. Um, and Extraordinary Jr. is actually the current world champion there. So the Nova Universal Junior Heavyweight Champion. But unfortunately, it was not quite enough to get him a win here tonight. And he gets an 84 in defeat. An 84 from Ed Stone and... And 89 from our former world champion Stone Yoshikawa. So unfortunately, Rhyme has already uh, already predicted just one wrong. I was surprised that you had picked them over them, but that's understandable. Uh, you did not know the the backstory there. I mean, I guess I put the titles up, but I might have put them up a little bit late. So 75 open up the match or open up the show. Good little start. Match number two, we have Razan, Akimoto, and CG Jimbo. Going by the tag team name of Fighting Spirit. Going up against the 
Pride Glory Honor Wrestling tag crown champions on that brand. Uh, Evil Intent. They defeated them pretty soundly. An 81 rated matchup. CG is definitely the MVP of this matchup. Now, Razan did very well on his own, but definitely got the crowd hotter. That's what we like to see. Two matches in, and we're uh, already getting pretty, pretty cooking. So we got the Golden Combat, former GCG legends, Hiryasu Gakusha and Takayuki 2000, who is also our inaugural heavyweight champion, before being signed by WLW. He currently works for WLW, and he's only here on loan. Um, but we have to have somebody on loan in the tournament because they would not loan me Magnum Kobe, who was a, um, a finalist last year. Him and Ultra Dragon were the finalists that eventually lost to Commander Kawagishi and Shinpei Hiroshi, aka Massive Thunder. So they get the win here tonight, the Golden Canvas Grappling Legends. And they did a better performance over Mucha Lucha, as I called them, Gino Montero and Mr. Lucha 3. So it looks like Mr. Lucha 3 needs a new gimmick, but that's all good. Uh, Takayuki is still improving. So a 75 on that matchup, not bad. In our final quarterfinal, in between, before our break, we have Kitaguchi, the current Exodus World Tag Team Champions. They get... A, a fantastic performance. I mean, 199 respectively. Uh, they face basically what could argue be argued to be one of the weak links of the tournament. But I wouldn't say there's any weak links. They're just un underutilized, you know, uh, with such a big roster and such good talents. Uh, Thrill Seeker is somebody who I'd really like to see in the main event someday. He's 36. You know, he's kind of limited on his time. Super Zero might be a little more limited, but he could definitely be a good... Uh, a good addition and on the Exodus brand I'm definitely going to uh, add another championship because I have the All Asia and the Gaijin championship which kind of I feel like restricts it because I'm trying to keep one as all Asian Japanese people and such and then the other one obviously Gaijin but I'm thinking I'm gonna make like an Iron Man championship or something of that that ilk if you have any uh, suggestions on maybe a title name feel free to drop them uh, let me know because I will be looking to make one and he would be a prime you know I, I'd like a title where it's not restricted on who can hold it uh, so 75 here they did pretty good Super Zero was the weak link but that's okay improving Throw Seeker is improving that's good so a 75 oh hey there's a gimmick change oh hey you can actually see that he's changing to extremists it's a very good gimmick good so we need in a break in our action the legendary WLW I don't know if he ever won the Universal Championship or not uh, I think that might be one of his uh, one of the interesting things about him was that he never actually did win that title but Hio Del Mephisto faces off against the legend and gets a 66 rated match and is victorious with a satanic elbow so not particularly great but it wasn't really supposed to be. It was kind of supposed to cool the crowd down just a little bit. I didn't set it in the in the notes or anything, but I think it'll do it all on its own. So a pretty decent little match uh, for a guy that's basically retired. He's like 54. I, I use him very occasionally. So a 66 on to more quarterfinals. In about the head, good wrestling. Decent reaction from the crowd. The championship connection, the All Asia Junior Heavyweight Champion Masa Kirata, as well as Gaijin Champion Psycho Killer Conrad Mikanen, who has done very, very, very well in Exodus. Uh, he's he's definitely a guy who he's maybe pushed a little bit beyond what he can actually do in terms of psychology and basics, but that's okay. Uh, he, he makes up for it with his high flying and his entertainment. As you can see, he put on an 82 rated performance. So. They, they beat up the uh, the veterans, the gatekeepers, the former tag team champions. Both guys over 40, but they still have something to do. Um, gets an 83, our best match of the night so far. I doubt it will be our best match of the night in general, but who knows? That's kind of the beauty of, of a tournament like this. You'd never know. And there we go. Now we know. So in our... 
I believe, sixth quarterfinal matchup, Massive Thunder, last year's champions, defeated Masao Subachi and Kazunori Yamura, aka Shameless Miscreants, along with Pretty Akakura and Shirai Yanagawa. Commander gets the pinfall over Kazunori with Diamond Dust. So, our big MVP of the matchup was Commander, which is not too shocking. He's the one that's in the main event. Shinpei has kind of felt a little bit behind, which usually in my Exodus games kind of goes the opposite direction. Usually, Commander ends up being more of a mid-carder, and Shinpei goes to the main event. So, it's pretty interesting to see that kind of flip-flop in this game, which is kind of what I always hope for, because Commander's arguably my favorite character in the entire game. I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> so, he gets a big, big performance here. Kazunori is getting better in Rumble skill, so an 85, again topping our best match of the night. In our co-main event of the evening, American Machine and Kwakami and Sanda. Now this is the one matchup that I think really could have gone either way. Um, American Machine, obviously ML, I stole him while he was the World WLW Universal Champion. So I stole him, and shortly after, I believe they released Insane Machine. It, it was one way or the other. One of them I got first, but the other one I signed afterwards because they weren't going to sign him. I know Insane Machine was the one that they had initially decided not to re-sign, but I do not remember which order I signed them in. So American Machine gets the win here, gets an 80, an Inferno Splash. Insane Machine was the weak link, which is kind of common at this point. Um, I mean... AML is just so amazing. He, he's so he's he's so amazing. Yeah, like I can't give him enough praise. He's a guy who I always love to sign, no matter what game I'm in. If the opportunity arises, he's a guy that uh, definitely is going to main event. He, he's getting up there, but he's he's definitely still got the best of his career in front of him. So an 80 rated match, kind of a downgrade from the last two matchups. Let's see if the main event can finish this out strong. If you haven't figured that out what it is, you're in for a treat. It's a, it's a dream matchup that a lot of people maybe never thought they would see. And as expected and hoped for, our main event is the best matchup of the night, as it should be. We have Ko Kawashima and Koiso, aka Pride and Glory. One of the favorites of this tournament defeated Wolf Hawkins and Joshua Taylor, aka Total Package. Now, Wolf Hawkins is under an insane contract. He was he, his contract was coming up, and he's available in Japan, surprisingly. And he was very, 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 very little known. Like these guys are both mid carters right now, but that's kind of why I gave them the main event. I put them in the main event, made it an open matchup. As you can see, Koiso and Kozu. Got 100 rate ratings, um, as kind of expected. They, I'm not gonna say they carried it, but of course they have more popularity, so they kind of drew more eyes to it. So superb wrestling. Kawashima gets the win with the Kawashima Driver 2005. So that's very, very good. Um, Koizo is the current heavyweight champion, as I had said before. So that gets a 91, our best matchup of the evening. Let's see what we rounded out with here. So we get a 90 overall, that's very, very good. I will definitely take that. Um, with, of course, the the added little matchup in the middle. Had that not happened, it would probably be a 91, I'd say. So DDGP day one comes to a close. And it was a pretty good little event. Um, no complaints here, definitely. And this leaves a lot to be un or a lot to be settled. I mean, if you look at the eight teams that are in tomorrow, it's an absolutely killer card. Um, the eight teams are the absolute eight best teams in the tournament. I made sure to do it that way. And it, anything can happen. I don't know who's going to win. I have not decided. I've fought with myself all week over it. I've been just scratching my head who is going to be the winner of this year's tournament. You know, there's so many options, so you're going to have to stay tuned and see exactly what we have happen. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll definitely have another video up for you very, very soon.